Bruce Lawn. Daily proverb will keep the foolishness away. If you guys aren't up to reading a chapter of Proverbs a day, one of the best things you could do this, usually 30, 31 days in a month, it's 31 Proverbs. I've been doing this for years, and today we're going to look at Proverbs chapter 6. We're going to be talking about a very uncomfortable topic, but I think the wisdom in this book is so life-giving, so practical, so simple, and I really do recommend it. But before we get into that, guys, my name is Ruslan. We have a free How to Study the Bible course in the description how to study the Bible or go to mastermydevo.com to get that completely for free. Let's jump into today's proverb. This is Proverbs chapter six. We'll start at verse one. My child, if you have put up security for a friend's debt or agreed to guarantee the debt of a stranger, if you have trapped yourself by your agreement and are caught by what you said, Follow my advice and save yourself, for you have placed yourself at your friend's mercy. Don't swallow your pride. Go and beg to have your name erased. Don't put it off. Do it now. Don't rest until you do. Save yourself like a gazelle escaping from a hunter, like a bird fleeing from a net. Okay, now we have to break this down. So the first part of this, he says, hey, if this is if you've done this, so listen up. If you've done this, some of y'all have done this, and I could just tell people exiting the video, Ruslan, this is too harsh. What are you talking about? Well, okay. If you have put up security for a friend's debt, what does that mean? If you've co-signed for someone, okay, agreed to guarantee the debt of a stranger. If you've co-signed for someone, if you've agreed to guarantee the debt of a stranger, okay, or if you've trapped yourself by your agreement, okay, if you've then gone out and gotten debt in your name, Okay, by your agreement and are caught by what you have said. Verse three, follow my advice and save yourself. Okay, it's interesting. It says save yourself. Okay, four, you have placed yourself at your friend's mercy. Don't swallow your pride. Go and beg to have your name erased. Don't put it off. Do it now. Don't rest until you do. Save yourself like a gazelle escaping from a hunter, like a bird fleeing from a net. So what what I like about this is the urgency here, right? Is if we're looking at building our life God's way with finances specifically, which is a very uncomfortable conversation. One of the best things we could do is to avoid getting and attaching ourselves to the bondage and the slavery of debt. But if you're there, here's the advice you better get gazelle intense. You better lock in and do one thing and focus on knocking that out. Okay? This is not something to be playing with. If you're constantly bogged down with debt because you're living paycheck to paycheck, because you've made some irresponsible decisions, the debt collectors are calling. You need to lock in and, and just go hard. Go hard. Lock in. Gazelle intensity. Get out of debt. This is not something to be playing with. I believe that there is a very practical side. I believe there's even a spiritual bondage that happens, and this is not popular to talk about. This is not cool to talk about. It's not sexy to talk about. We just want to talk about hypothetical. Oh, what do you think about? Oh, once saved, always saved. What do you think about tongues? What do you, all these, all these hypotheticals. But when we get down to some nitty gritty, if if you're in this situation, You need to get gazelle intense. And by the way, what I think this is also hinting at is that, hey, don't put it off. Do it now. Don't rest until you do. Some of y'all are a little too cozy. Some of y'all take a few too many naps. Some of you guys sleep in a little too often. You have no urgency for moving your life along in God's direction for you. And then verse five here, he's giving you save yourself like a gazelle escaping from a hunter, like a bird fleeing from a net. Dave Ramsey calls this gazelle intensity. When you are approaching getting out of debt like a gazelle is approaching getting away from its captors. We are locking in. This is what we're doing. We've made some bad mistakes. Now we have to go and clean this up. We got to make better decisions. Why? Because if you're consistently living hand to mouth, paycheck to paycheck, because your overhead is through the roof, because you went and took out that student loan, you went and got that new car note, like a, like a reliable car, all the things I did, I co-signed on a loan for a condo with my mom that then went into foreclosure. 
okay? I then also had a brand new car and I took out tons and tons of student loan debt even though I had grants to get me through school and I woke up at 25 years old, newlywed with $45,000 in debt and another $55,000 sitting there and I went and had to lock in and get gazelle intense and it was one of the best things I ever did. Okay, and so this notion that God doesn't care about how you handle your finances, that, hey, I'm just going to live handsome out, that well, why should you store up for yourself treasures on earth, right? And, and quoting that verse out of context is going to get you messed up because you're now putting a limit and a cap on what you're, the freedom you're able to do, your freedom with generosity, your freedom with taking another opportunity for uh, a different job, maybe a ministry opportunity. Right. And so I love this gazelle intensity. You got to get locked in. Let me put, let me pose it to you this way. If you need, if you say you're $20,000 in debt and in order for uh, one of your family members, your favorite, your, your child, your husband, your mom, in order for them to live, you have to knock out that $20,000 in, in 18 months. I bet you, you would figure out a way to do it. That's what gazelle intensity is. I bet you would figure out a way to do it. If someone you loved life dependent on you cleaning up that mess and getting that amount of money, $20,000 for me is $45,000. For some of you guys, it might be more. And you approached it with that intensity. I promise you, you would figure it out. You would pick up odd jobs. You, you, would, you would figure out more scarce skills. You would figure it out. Now, here's some practical financial advice. This is the part where, we, where again, people don't pay attention to. Verse six, this is if you're not in debt. Okay, so I'll talk to all the people who are in debt. Okay, if you were in debt, go clean it up. Okay, like for real, like go look at the Dave Ramsey baby steps, go clean it up. Verse six, this is if you're not in debt. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer, gathering food for the winter. But you, lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? A little extra sleep, a little extra slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit and scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. So if you're not in debt, there's your verse. Take a lesson from the ant. The ant doesn't have a, a governor, doesn't have a boss, doesn't have a mom or dad, doesn't have anybody yelling at it to do the right decisions. Nevertheless, the ant intrinsically knows that they need to labor hard in the summer. Why? Because that's when the harvest comes, okay? They, they labor hard for the summer and then they gather food for the winter. Or in our era, we would say putting something away for a rainy day, squirreling something away for, for, for times that aren't so good, right? This is Proverbs chapter six we're in, if you're just tuning in. They labor hard all summer. Have you labored hard before? Like right now, there's, there's a gang of job openings right now. Do you guys know this? There's millions of job openings right now and people, they, they can't fill them because there's a lot of people that don't want to go to work. They don't want to go back to work. This is a time of harvest. Go labor hard, gather food and save some if you're, if you're not in debt. If you're in debt, get that, get that debt paid off, right? But you lazy bones, this is, this is speaking to some of y'all. How long will you sleep? When will you wake up? A little, yeah, everybody's talking about being woke. Well, when will you wake up? A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands. Then poverty will prance on you like a bandit and scarcity attack you like an armed robber. Proverbs is speaking generally to a lot of us, right? It's, it's, it's not an absolute term. Your situation may be different. You may have uh, other circumstances that I don't know about. But generally speaking, if you're able body, if you're of sound mind and you have a ton of debt, you need to get gazelle intense and knock that out. Okay, it, it, and I'm talking consumer debt, credit card debt, new uh, student loans, that those sorts of things. If you are not in any debt, praise God, start squirreling some away, start saving, create an emergency fund for yourself, start managing your money, start learning more scarce skills that you can take other skills from the other skills you have. You could stack those right with other skills and you can develop a very unique skill set. If you could do that, make yourself more valuable to your current employer, make yourself more of an asset to the team that you're already on, then you will have more opportunities open up to you. The, the, the two variables that are uh, primary in how you uh, earn in this life, the two things that are going to be the most important for you, okay, is going to be your skill set. Some of you guys aren't going to like me, but I'm, I got to tell you the truth. Most people have two arms and two legs, right? So guess what? It, it, you're not going to get paid a lot for bagging, uh, for bagging groceries, 
or for, for, for cleaning, right? Why? Because it's a more common skill to bag groceries or to clean. Why? Because everybody has two arms and two legs. Most people can do that, right? But not everybody can do code. Not everybody can do after effects. Not everybody can write copy. Not everybody can, understands engineering, not, right? So the more scarce your skill set is, the more value you have in the marketplace. Your skill set, that's one. Two is your network of people. The people you have access to, the city that you're in, the environment that you're around, the type of church you go to, the friends you've had from high school, so on and so forth. Some of us have different advantages there. Some of you guys went to Ivy League schools, your network is popping. Others, y'all went to community college like I did. Your network, not so popping, right? So you have to develop a, a, a great skill set and then go serve your network. And your network will expand and your reputation will expand and you can use your skill set to bless your network. Your network will expand your skill set. That is how you earn more money. And that is the best way ultimately to get you out of debt as quickly as possible. All right. So hopefully this is helpful. I know it's not cool to talk about, but I think it's super important for us to understand how money works. Why? Because if you go and you read Matthew chapter 25, that is one of the essential parts, which is stewardship, money management right? Understanding how to handle God's money. It's all throughout the New Testament. We talk about it all the time on the channel. So anyway, hopefully this is helpful. Um, let me know what y'all think. Yo, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you check out one of these other videos on the side. Give this video a like and subscribe. And don't forget about our three mass three day master YouTube challenge coming up. The link is in the description for that below. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you guys. Peace.